welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Look at this absolutely beautiful fighter jet, the F-15 Eagle. My goodness, just look at those afterburners burning away there as this beautiful aircraft takes off. I have to admit, I have a love for the F-15, as many of you around the world do. And I do have to address something very quickly before we get into today's video. You guys have been going hard in the comments about me apparently recently being a Russian fanboy. I've been doing a lot of reviews and uh, overviews of Russian equipment. And it's interesting reading the comments, a number of you thinking that I'm sort of doing favoritism towards Russian equipment. Folks, you know me, you should know this channel by now, that I don't really have any true bias to anything. Um, I'm just fascinated by military equipment, but my goodness, you guys really like telling me your opinion in the comments section, and in all honesty, I love reading your comments. It's it's really fascinating to me, uh, kind of listening to what you perceive me to be um, when I talk about military equipment. And now we're about to talk about some military equipment before we get into it. Let's hear some more of that opinion that you're so strong of. What is your favorite fighter jet of the world? Mine, personally, is the F-22 Raptor. I think it is absolutely incredible piece of technology. Uh, a lot of F-35 fanboys are going to be really upset. I do think the F-22 is the greatest fighter jet ever produced. But the F-15 Eagle is, in all honesty, a close second for me. It is, first of all, truly a icon for the United States Air Force and the United States military. I mean, Eagle. It's literally part of your national animal. And the other fact is that it has never been defeated in the sky. That is an incredible feat for a modern fighter jet. But is it so modern? It's been around since the 70s, 80s, guys. It's not certainly the most uh, new fighter jet of the world, but it is upgradable and heavily upgradable. We've got the F-15E, the F-15EX, which is what we're going to talk about today with the United States Air Force advancing its maritime strike capabilities with the LRASM integration on the F-15E and F-15EX. Now, some of the footage you're going to see in today's video is a bit of a mix of this particular missile system uh, because it's very difficult to find the actual system we're going to talk about in terms of footage, the AGM-158C-1 LRASM missile. But we're going to talk about it because this is quite fascinating. The United States Air Force aren't primarily uh, designated to knock out ships. That's obviously left to the Navy with the F-18 Hornet, another wonderful jet produced by Boeing. But the United States Air Force is starting to branch into maritime strike capability, which is really interesting because it's not something they would normally do. And integrating the new AGM-158C1 is pretty cool. Now, this development was facilitated by the United States Navy's Naval Air Systems Command, or NAVAIR, in partnership with Lockheed Martin. And it underscores a bit of a growing importance of precision, survivability, and versatility in engaging ships in modern warfare. But why is this exciting? Well, we have to talk a little bit about the missile system first. What is the LRASM? So the AGM-158C, or Charlie, is a cutting-edge, stealthy, anti-ship missile designed to counter advanced maritime threats. It's been developed as an evolution of the AGM-158 Joint Air Surface Standoff Missile Extended Range, or JASSM-ER. The LRASM brings a host of advanced features tailored for naval operations. Unlike traditional missiles, this missile is equipped with a multi-mode sensor suite, including a passive radio frequency sensor and an imaging infrared seeker. This combination allows it to detect and classify specific targets within a very complex and congested environment on the seas, even when enemy vessels are dispersed or very heavily defended. Additionally, the missile incorporates very advanced navigation systems. It is extremely jam-resistant to GPS, which, again, we don't know if this is fact. It's purely kind of brochure statements, and, you know, I can't prove whether or not it's jam-resistant. I'm sure many of you in the comments can't either. But it's complemented by an inertial measurement unit, ensuring very precise targeting even when the GPS signals are degraded or somehow denied and hacked. A robust weapon data link allows in-flight updates, giving the missile adaptability to respond to changing mission conditions or threats. This is pretty cool. So, in theory, this means that the F-15 pilot can basically change the flight path or trajectory or target of this missile technically mid-flight. Now, I don't know how capable it is of doing that or how easy it is of doing that. This is a fairly new system, not the original missile, but the C variant, 
and there's still a lot of development, I think, going on with it. A lot of the footage you're seeing right now being launched off the beautiful B1 Lancer Bomber is of the older variants, okay? Or some of them are even completely different. They're a completely different LRASM, but they're just there for showing you the basic footage um, of what, you know, standoff missiles and extended range missiles for the American military looks like. But the C variant, to me, honestly looks like a cross of the Silver Surface surfboard with a coffin and a B-2 bomber. It's just very peculiar looking missile and uh, when we talk about stealth it certainly screams stealth. Whether or not it is stealthy or not is another matter but it's an interesting dynamic because you don't normally think of a missile as being stealthy. You just think of it going very very fast and trying to dodge and ha maybe have some electronics in there from preventing it from being you know shot down them getting to the target. But being seen and identified is something I haven't really ever thought about missiles doing. Yes, they keep close to the sea for sea skimming, and they change trajectories, some of them, to kind of throw off engagements or tracking of the missile. But to actually go unnoticed from radar from long distance, that's pretty cool. And that's what this is looking like. It's like an F-117 long-range missile. And I've never thought that stealth could apply to missiles, but it does. Why the F-15E and the F-15EX? What's all the excitement about? Well, the choice of these Strike Eagles from its advanced successes have been selected as a strategic choice, and both aircraft are obviously renowned for their versatility, huge payload capacity, and most importantly, range, making them the ideal candidates for long-range maritime strike roles, which is particularly what these missiles are designed for. The F-15E and EX boast the huge ability of carrying multiple LRASMs simultaneously. This increases a massive mission lethality for naval warfare and enables coordinated strikes on multiple targets. It's not saying the F-18 Hornet does not have a lethality and the capability to carry a lot of firepower, but the new upgraded F-15s have a lot more juice and a lot more capability and technology to really link to this missile system. For instance, for the avionics and sense integration, both platforms are equipped with advanced avionics and sensors capable of managing the very complex targeting requirements of this LRASM. For example, the Universal Armament Interface, or UAI, is being integrated into these aircraft to ensure seamless communication between the missile and onboard systems. The other important factor of the fighter jets being picked is their flexibility and incredible survivability. You're going to want to pick an aircraft that's renowned, knows that it does exactly what it's been proven to do in the decades of combat that it's been in, and introduces the enhancements that are going to make it worthwhile. You do not want to invest in something so expensive like a stealth missile into something that's really not proven and not robust enough to take something like the missile in its configuration. The jets also have upgraded digital fly-by-wire controls, improved sensors, and these features really complement the missile's own stealth and targeting capabilities, ensuring a higher probability of mission success in hostile environments. These jets are the perfect choice to integrate these kind of systems. The weapon hardpoints and pylons are being modified to accommodate these new missiles, with the dimensions, weights being placed onto the structure of the jet, which is perfect for it. Lots of heavy duty systems can be held on those pylons. While the fire control systems are also being upgraded to leverage the missile's advanced capabilities. These efforts ensure that both platforms can employ the LRSAM in real world operations, not just testing and development. But earlier I mentioned the strategic decision. Well with the growing complexity of threats in regions like the Indo-Pacific, this has necessitated a joint service approach. It cannot all be left to the US Navy for maritime strike missions. With the jets and the United States Air Force now also being highly flexible to provide long-range strikes against enemy warships, it's changing the dynamic between the USAF and the US Navy. And it's particularly valuable, of course, like I had mentioned, in the Pacific. We want as many jets capable of launching as many missiles as possible. China, for example, are producing aircraft carriers like it's going out of fashion. It's actually kind of scary how quickly they're able to produce aircraft carriers or any military asset for that matter. And you want systems like this to be deployed quickly if something hits the fan. By deploying LRSM capable aircraft, it can enhance deterrence for the US military and extend the reach of maritime operations. And as I mentioned, the F-15 has an incredible range. 
But the F-15 doesn't get all the spotlight. This system complements existing platforms for the US Navy as well. The F-A-18E and F Super Hornets and the B-1B Lancer of the United States Air Force, both of which are already equipped with this missile, have been doing very well. The result is a more distributed and resilient strike force if required capable of operating in very highly contested environments where traditional naval forces might face significant risks. The process has not been easy though, and just like anything, extremely expensive. There is so much money being pumped into this program with Boeing and Lockheed Martin. You've got to think of the amount of technology we're talking about here. We're talking about stealth missiles going on the latest generation of F-15s. They're not cheap. Money is floating around all over the place. But of course, when you have something this heavy, there's challenges things like aerodynamic profiles. The adjustments to the F-15's hard points and release mechanisms make it tough. Engineers are working to ensure that the modifications do not adversely affect the aircraft's already incredible performance and handling. But overall, it's been pretty well accepted. The initial testings have been expected as they thought they would, and confirming the missile's effectiveness in simulated combat scenarios. Just like anything though, it's hard to say whether or not this is going to be very effective in actual combat. But as this news just comes straight out of the frying pan, we're still looking into the future and what else is going to replace the LRASM. And it's only one component of the US military's Department of Defense broader strategy to enhance anti-ship capabilities. Looking ahead, the US Navy is developing the Hypersonic Air-Launched Offensive Anti-Surface Warfare Weapon System, otherwise known as HALO, intended to replace this missile in the late 2020s. Halo promises even greater range, speed, and survivability, ensuring US military and naval forces maintain a technological edge in an extremely challenging maritime strike operation climate. Fielding of the Halo is planned for the fiscal year of 2029, and once again, a lot of money is going into this. And this is meant to complement the capabilities of the LRASM and provide a seamless transition to the next generation of anti-ship weaponry. So there you have it, folks. The Americans are working hard on their anti-ship missiles. And why do I keep talking so much lately about anti-ship missiles? Well, because I truly feel that the next long-range warfare attacks that we're going to see are going to come at sea. Okay, We're not going to have ballistic missiles in land conflicts, I think, as much anymore. Of course, we do have the Ukrainian conflict. Artillery is king in that battle, along with the drone. But if something happens in the Pacific... It's going to be a naval battle first and foremost, and I do think anti-ship missiles are going to be the forefront of that battle if it comes to be. And it kind of fascinates me, especially, as I said recently, I've been playing the Microprose game, Sea Power. It is so much fun, um, but really kind of makes me think of how terrifying naval combat could be if the proverbial shit hit the fan, okay? These missiles are very capable, but you also got to remember there's a lot of systems out there that are designed to take them out before getting even close to a flotilla or a ship of any kind. Um, but I think with the developments like the Halo system, it's an arms race once again, but we're at a naval arms race more heavily recently, I think, for the Pacific region, and the US military knows this. That's why they're pushing so hard, okay? We do have China pushing very hard on their naval fleets, and it is a little scary, okay? Kind of the crouching tiger, hidden dragon situation for myself, in my opinion. Again, I can't speak too much of that, but considering the fast speed of how ships are being produced in China, you're going to want to have missiles that are able to create a counter threat. Um, and these missiles aren't cheap. There's not going to be a massive stockpile of LRASMs, okay? That's why they're trying to invest in the F-15 to really find a jet that's going to be critical in launching and delivering these things without getting blasted out the sky first and what better of a jet to use than the f-15 with its incredible combat portfolio but what do you think do you think anti-ship missiles is going to be the forefront of naval warfare of the future are we still going to be going back to ship to ship missiles uh, that are not going to be launched by aircraft or do you think we're going to go back to submarines i'd love to hear your opinion let me know in the comment section below once again i'd really appreciate if you could leave me a like or a dislike, whatever you want to do, throw some comments at me too. I know a lot of you like to have a little bit of a battle in the comments. It's interesting to read sometimes. 
Once again, not trying to be a Russian fanboy or a Western fanboy, I just like talking about this stuff. And I don't condone war either, so I'll just put that out there too. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, see you next time, bye bye.